Hey guys, um, sorry I had intended to get it out a little earlier today. Uh, my hope is to get it out in the in the morning or late morning every day, but I uh, uh, wasn't able to today, so I apologize for that. But um, I'm also trying to make them a little bit shorter since they're every day. But um, let's pray, and we're going to get right into the end of chapter uh, or into the section that we were in uh, the last couple days. Father, I worship you and we praise you and we give you this time, Father. I pray that you bless each person watching this, Lord, that they will absorb what you have for them. Father, I ask that every word that comes out of my mouth is from you and you only. None of myself, Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last couple days, we've been talking about what it means to bear fruit and abide, to abide in him and to abide in his love. But I want to begin in verse 12 of John chapter 15. It says this, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. He quantifies here, again, the last couple of days we've been talking about what it means to bear fruit. Right? Jesus is the vine. His father is the vine dresser. We are the branches that are in the vine. And if we produce fruit, then the father prunes us so that we can produce more fruit. What is that fruit? That fruit is, is that gold that's refined by fire. It's the very love that emanates from our lives. Fruit is, is literally what... The Lord does through our lives to affect this earth or others around us. That's what the fruit is. And, and if we are bearing fruit, then the Father prunes us to produce more fruit. If we are not bearing fruit, we're cut off. And we're, we're cast away. We're unused. We don't lose our salvation, as I've stated before. It's not about that. Ephesians 1, 13, 14 guarantees that. But, but we lose our effectiveness. And so, again, in verse 12, he says, This is my commandment. He said, if you, let me take, take you back to verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So then he quantifies what his commandment is. In verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he goes on to explain and quantify what that love looks like. He said, Love is about being willing to give everything for it. Jesus was willing. At the time that he was telling this to his disciples, he knew that he was going to die on the cross. He knew that he was going to give his life because he loved his creation, because he loved his friends, he loved his disciples. This was not an abstract thing where where Jesus said, well, I just love mankind, so I will give my life for mankind. No, he had relationships. He had relationships with them. He was close to them. He even had an inner circle of relationships, of those who pressed into him even more than the others did. And so he said, my commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say, love me as I love you. He was giving the example of love being the key to relationship with others, just as it is the key to relationship with him, with the Lord. And he said, if it is love, he said, greater love has no one than this, that you lay your life down for your friends. So, so, it was a way to quantify what real love was. Real love required sacrifice. Real love required a, a willingness to put yourself behind everybody else. Or 
definitely behind the object of your love. If we love the Lord in relationship, and we really love the Lord, then we are putting him before love for ourself, or even our own needs. Because it says, greater love have no one than this, that that someone lay down his life for his friends, that someone give everything for somebody else, a greater sacrifice for somebody else than they would for themselves. He said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. So when, when he first called the disciples, they were his servants. They were his pupils. But over time, they built relationship together. And no longer were they friends because of the investment back and forth with each other. They became friends. He said, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. Then he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide so this, this idea of, of fruit, you know, in this time that we're in, this sequestering, um, you know, I would imagine most, most of the country is in the same spot we are, where, where you're supposed to be staying home tomorrow. Um, you know, we're, everything we're doing is online. Uh, we're not gathering together. We're, we're honoring uh, what the president had asked. We support him, of course, and, and are honoring what he asked, so we're not gathering together. In this sequestering, it affords an incredible opportunity. Now, maybe things are really crazy right now because you're trying to get stuff from the store, and the stores are ridiculous. We went out to BJ's this morning, and... <laughs> I mean, it, we got there when it opened and got a few things got out about 20 minutes later and there was a 45-minute wait in line, you know, already that fast. So, so maybe you don't have a lot of extra time right now, but you're about to if you don't already. And the point is, part of the facilitation of what is happening right now is for his bride to pay attention. As I said the other day, this is a shot across the bow for the bride. It is a wake-up call, if you will. It is an opportunity to see truth and to seek truth. Because this judgment, and it is a judgment, is not focused on the bride. It is focused on the world. It is not focused on, in fact, those who are sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, sealed with his seal, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, are not a target of this judgment. doesn't mean we won't feel the effects of it. Of course we do. But we are not the target of this judgment. It is, however, a opportunity for the bride to press in. It is the beginning of a separation that is coming in the bride. That separation is the hot, the lukewarm, and the cold. And, in fact, I, I want to turn there here in a second, but, but that separation is going to come from just our desire and relationship with Him. Where is your relationship right now? You know, if you're watching this video... You, I, I, I would hope it's, it's because you are really asking yourself, where is my relationship with the Lord? What does that mean? What does it mean to hear his voice? What does it mean to be hot instead of lukewarm? What does it mean to be lukewarm? I, you know what, let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter three, uh, the church of to the church of Laodicea. Um, uh, let me just start in verse fifteen. I know your works; you're neither hot or cold. Would that you would that you were either cold or hot? So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'll spit you from my mouth. 
And here's the explanation of what he means by those who are lukewarm. For you say, I'm rich. I've prospered. I need nothing. How many times do we hear that from the bride? And it can even be a little bit confusing because we all know we need him. But do you need him enough to pay attention to him? Do you need him enough to not just live by his precepts, but build relationship with him to communicate and commune with him on an ongoing daily basis? I'm rich. I've prospered. I need nothing. And he said, not realizing that you are wretched. You're pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. See, he was drawing a difference between our physical needs and our spiritual needs. We may have everything we need physically. Or before this time that we're in right now, perhaps. And we, we may have felt everything's going great. I, I, you know, I teach a Sunday school class at church and I have my, my nice group of friends and we, you know, we do good things. We don't do bad things. You know, I give my tithes. Um, I do everything I'm supposed to do as a Christian and, and yeah, I'm, I'm moving along pretty good. I, I feel pretty good about my Christian walk. And what he's saying is if that's not coming from the heart, if that is not a heart of relationship with the Lord and that's not where it's being produced from, then it's just the opposite of that. It's wretched. It's pitiable. It's poor. Because it's not coming from a basis of relationship with the Lord and basis of love. I can live my life by doing things, but the real meaning of that comes when I, when I do those things perpetuated my, by my love for those people and for my Savior. Huge difference. I, I learned the difference substantially first time I went to Nigeria. When I went to Nigeria, I prayed that the Lord would give me his heart for those people. Because I didn't know anybody there. And when I set my foot down on that soil for the first time, I was overwhelmed with love for a people I had never met, people I didn't know, I had nothing in common with. But I loved them because I felt the Lord's heart on it. And in my relationship with the Lord, he gave me his heart on it. That is the, the, that is what's produced when relationship produces the love that brings the fruits and, and that's what he's talking about here. He said, if you don't have that, verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. What's he talking about by gold refined by fire? First of all, that the gold refined by fire is the fruit that is based out of love. It is the, the fruit of our life, the fruit of our relationship with him that has been tried through fire, tried through, through, through his refining, which is a, a very painful process. Because when we say, I love you, Lord, rest assured he's going to prove out that love. Because it's not just about your words, it's about what your heart believes and what your, your heart has your body react to and your will perform. And so to buy gold refined by fire is saying, saying, Lord, in this relationship, I want you. I want you to produce in me the works that you want but Lord, refine the love that is in my heart. Refine the love that is for you and the love that you give me for others because it has to be both. And when we do that, something is produced. And it's the very next thing that is said. 
and white garments, so that you may clothe yourselves, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen. White garments represent a purity, a purified walk. We talked about this last time, that that purity in our relationship with Lord is is really a critical thing, and it's not something that's that's built overnight. It is something that is built over time. And the reason for that is because if the Lord were to download, if you were to say, Lord, I want to be pure before you, purify me, cleanse me, show me everything that stands between you and I, it would be overwhelming to us if he actually showed us everything. We wouldn't even know where to begin. It would be so overwhelming we would quit. And that's not how relationship is built anyways. What it is, is Lord, show me, just show me anything according to your will, just show me. And what he chooses to show you, you then begin to work on. You then begin to to understand and make changes in your lives uh, about that portion that he's showing you. We choose obedience, then when we do, it, it peels back a piece that may expose something else. Or it builds up a faith in us that now there may be things that that our faith can handle, whereas it couldn't handle before. The Lord knows how to build relationship. We have to press into that relationship, and we have to be obedient. But what's produced out of that relationship is the very purity of our walk that 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 we call testimony. Satan is overcome by the word of our testimony. Not just by what we say. It's by how we live. It's by who we are. It's, if there could be a camera on us all the time, what would it, what would it show? If there could be a documentary of everything in our mind, what, it would, what would it reveal? It's not just about what other people see, it's about what God sees. And when David cried out to show him anything, it was out of a heart of wanting to be in this close relationship with the Lord. And I'm not going to belabor the point because I I know I wanted to keep this short, but I want to encourage you on something. See, this time that we're at right now, this sequestered time, we have a real opportunity to press in. (laughs) In a way, God is forcing you the opportunity for time. Are you going to use that wisely? I want to encourage you to press into him. Press it. If, if, If you need something to look at, take John chapter 15, whole book of John for that matter, But take John chapter 15, take Romans chapter 7 and 8, take Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and just dig into them. Don't just read them, dig into them. If you've read them a thousand times, pray before you read and and let the Lord make, make this be a time that he peels a new layer back and shows you something. This is an opportunity. To, to press into him, I want to encourage you to do it. I also want to encourage you, if you have any questions, because I, I know I've had, I, I get a lot of questions about, about um, you know, what may be going on, what it looks like, um, you know, how to deal with it. Anything that you may have a question for, feel free to email. If you know my email address, you can email me directly. Um, you can comment on on this video in one of the places it's posted or if you don't know my email you can email go on to our website ignition633.org and hit the contact send send an email that way and uh, they know to get it to me so um, but I, I want to interact and be a help I, I'm not putting out these videos just put out videos the Lord told me to put them out every day. The purpose was to bring the remnant together. And for me, it's more about interaction. And that's that's what I, I really want to see. So, um, so go ahead and email me. But I, I'm going to close in prayer. But I want to encourage you, 
Take these times that we're in right now. Press into him. Press into him. Take the time to press into him. Don't lose this opportunity. He will show you something amazing through it. He'll begin to open your eyes to levels of relationship, no matter where you're at. Levels of relationship you've never experienced before. He promises to. And we have that opportunity before us right now. Now tomorrow I won't be putting out a video because I'll be preaching. That'll be put out in the same place. And then we'll be back to the the, the shorter videos on Monday. But I'm going to close in prayer. I, I just want you to be encouraged. And, and I look forward to hearing from you. And we'll, we'll talk again. Father, we worship you and praise you. And Lord, I just pray for each person that watches this, Lord. Help them to press in in this time, to take advantage of this time that you have, you have altered the way we all live right now for a purpose. And it's an opportunity. Help us to press in by ourselves. Help us to press in as families. Press in as husband and wife. Press in as brother and sister. God, help us to press in. And see what your plan is for your bride. Your plan is not for her to be lukewarm. You've said that she'll, she'll be spit out of your mouth, those that are. Your plan is for her to be hot. And the only way a Christian is hot is through the manifestation of relationship with you, the depth of relationship with you, where you become more important than anything in their lives. And when our love for you becomes more important than anything, that same love manifests to each other. That, that's the thing that so many don't get. If I'm really in love with you, Father, I will really be in love with people. And so, Lord, I just pray that you bring your remnant together, those that are in love with you, those that, that offer that love to each other. Bring us together, Father, and bring us closer to you through this time. Find us faithful. We wait for you. We wait for your return. We look forward to your return. But Father, until that day, find us faithful in building relationship with you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.